Hey there YouTube, Far North Racing here, and welcome back to the tomfoolery that is our adventures in CNC, our ongoing project where I'm trying to build a CNC controller so I can convert a 1978 Wibco bar bed lathe to CNC control. In the latest episode we have this bad boy right here. We've gone ahead and sourced ourselves a DC motor, a 90 volt DC motor out of a treadmill, and we're going to use this to replace the 240 volt motor that came with it because it's a European motor so it's, it uses European electronics. What we want to do is get rid of stepped pulleys and give this controller box the ability to change the speed of this under computer control. So let's go ahead and see how we did it. So this here is an Icon 95 volt DC permanent magnet motor. Got it from eBay, it was pulled out of a treadmill Got it for super cheap because this brush housing back here, he'd cracked it and repaired it with JB Weld, which makes him a man after my own heart. That's the base of it, is this motor right here. The second part is this aluminum ring right here that I cut on the X-carve. It takes the metric motor face, which uses these bolts right here to attach to the lathe headstock, and adapt it to this flange here on the motor. And it was a little bit closer than I liked. I should have actually made the diameter a bit bigger to make it easier to sink some of these holes in uh, because I had to grind away a little bit of the, the motor housing. But that's what prototypes are for. And remember, uh, measure once, cut twice, right? This spacer slash uh, bolt pattern adapter just allows me to screw in these bolts and get the distance it needs to be away from the headstock hole correct. Right now, I also have the spindle index sensor mounted. So all I've done is I've fabricated up a little bracket. This here is a photo sensor that this interrupter disc uses to send a tachometer system to the computer. And all I've done is taken an old CD, one of the mini CDs that acts as a driver for a, this one was an Ethernet adapter, and just bolted it on here. I've carved myself a notch right there. So as that rotates around, it progressively interrupts or de-interrupts the signal coming out of that sensor and that sends a signal up this wire up to the computer. The final version will have something like this mounted to the actual headstock spindle. I want to read direct spindle speed, not motor speed, and have to do math to convert it. But for now, we're just using this to test that functionality and to make sure that we can check and see what speed this thing makes. Because as it came from eBay, I have no idea what the maximum speed of this motor is, so we're going to to find out. It has a 17 millimeter shaft, which is a oddball standard. Most pulleys in North America are, are standardized, so I had to get an adapter to take it up to the right size for uh, three quarter inch pulleys. And I've also got another pulley ordered that I'm going to drill out to 17 millimeters, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. And of course, here we have a half inch nut. Yep, we're mixing net drifting standard on the same motor. Awesome. And it's left hand thread. So it turns out you can get those from Amazon. So uh, I now have 25 of these little bastards, which will come in handy if I decide to make 25 of them, I don't know. So, motor, adapter, sensor. Now let's see how we actually drive the motor. So this piece here is the DC motor driver. It takes AC in and it puts DC out. This is a KB Electronics, KBIC, KB125 motor driver. Which is to say that it is capable of powering up to a 1.5 horsepower DC motor in a voltage range up to 95 DC volts. So this is perfect for our current motor. This is an analog controller, not a digital one. So it's doing this all with discrete components, including this great big jeepless resistor here, which is the current limiter that uh, controls how much current is allowed to go to the motor. You have to buy that resistor separately, depending on the maximum horsepower that your motor is going to see, which is a bit of a pain in the ass, but eh, it works. Over here, we have AC in. Here you can just see the line voltage and the, and the, the neutral. That just goes into the controller there. That's a ground. On this side here, we have the correct controls for the computer. This controller is normally intended to use with a potentiometer, sort of like this. We can program the computer to pretend that it's a potentiometer by changing voltages across here. So that's what we've done. This, this here goes to a motor controller inside the computer, and that provides the varying voltage that this uses to provide varying voltage out to the DC motor. This is the DC motor plus lead. This is the DC motor negative lead. AC comes in here. A varying voltage signal comes across this to tell it how much to go out, and it just varies the signal out here to control the speed of the D DC motor. Very, very simple. And then it has a few of these little pots on here to allow you to change for 
acceleration and maximums and minimums and just kind of fine tune the controller so the it works for your motor. A very simple component, uh, not much to it. Uses this great big monster heat sink. It's only ready to go to its full power unless you're mounted it to this heat sink. And you would think that they would have a predefined enclosure for it, uh, given that it's already, you know, set up this way. But they don't. You have to make your own enclosure. So we'll come back to that later. This aluminum plate is actually part of the enclosure that I'm building for it, which isn't quite finished, but is on its way there. Uh, you'll notice that I've got it set it up in electroboom mode right now, where there's no fuses or switches or anything. You just plug it in, it turns on. Uh, that's just for prototyping. The final version, and I'm going to show you the enclosure in a second, uh, will have switches and fuses and lights and bells and whistles and all the rest of this. This is the second part of the equation. We have AC power going into the motor, we have DC power going out to the motor, and we have a control line coming into the computer to control it so that we can actually vary the speed. Let's look at the third part. So here we can see the third part of the equation, which is the computer spindle motor controller. This part here is a pulse width modulated variable voltage out motor controller. What that means is, is that it, it takes in signals here from the Ethernet smooth stepper, and the Ethernet smooth stepper treats it like a stepper motor. So it just gives a direction, and then it gives a frequency pulse that tells it how fast it's supposed to go. And this board converts that frequency pulse into a variable voltage that comes out of this line here, which goes out up to one of these connectors and then out to the motor controller. So Mach tells it how fast it wants to go, the smooth stepper then varies the frequency on this, and this board converts that to a variable voltage that fakes the potentiometer that the KBC wants to see as an, as an input control. There's a little bit of tuning involved. You have to measure the voltage across the connectors on the potentiometer on the motor controller board to find out what its zero and its maximum voltage is. And then you have to tw twist a pot on here so that the output voltage on there matches. And uh, you have to make sure that at no point in time do the grounds on these two things cross because then you get f current flowing through it and you let all the blue smoke out. But uh, for the most part, that's all there is to it. Really very simple thing to use. The second part of this assembly is the pulse counter. That's what we use to send an RPM signal to the computer. This wire here goes out to the electro sensor that I showed you on the motor. And just this positive and negative here connects to the breakout board for the smooth stepper. And it just sends pulses into the computer so the computer can count it. And Mach knows to treat that as an RPM sensor and a position sensor. And that allows you to both control the speed of the motor. It also allows you to index the spindle so that you can do computer controlled threading, which is awesome because that lathe doesn't have a lead screw on it that's uh, geared to the spindle. So the only way we're making that happen is through electronic means. So uh, let me just pull out and we'll get all three things in the shot and you can see how this thing all works together under computer control. So we powered up the KBIC by plugging it in. There's a green light on there that shows it is powered up. We'll go ahead and plug in the main computer. Flip it on, we get a quick squawk out of our stepper motors, and we see everything lights up. And up here you can see we've got ourselves some red lights showing the current status of the pulse counter. We'll just go ahead and start mock. Okay, so we've got mock started. We'll just go ahead and enable it. And now we'll just do a quick stepper motor test. Yep. Yep. So we've gone ahead and made sure that mock is now talking to the smooth stepper. And you can watch the lights on this breakout board switch around as we do various things with there, so you can see that it's working. So now I'll just go over here, M3S1200, start spindle at 1200 RPM, cycle start, and there we go. Now you might have noticed that little surge. I've gone ahead and enabled computer control of the spindle speed. And the configuration of the feedback on that is a little bit tricky. I'm having a little bit of trouble with it on the free spinning motor. And I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time trying to get it perfect because when you add the inertia of the headstock and all the rest of that, uh, it's going to change the nature of the programming on it. But for right now, we've programmed in a 1200 RPM spindle speed and it is keeping it between 1198 and 2001. So feedback is working. It's doing its thing. And you can see up here, you can probably just see the flicker that, that shows every pulse and stuff that's going on. And if I slow it down, it 
So that's 570 RPM. You can see the index spindle pulse going on there a little bit better. And we'll go even slower. There's 384 RPM. Now you can definitely see where that pulse is going on. How slow can we go? Well, we can turn it all the way off. And we're at 360 controlled on the thing. So a little more adjustment needed to get that tuned out. But like I say, that's going to wind up being done on the lathe itself with the entire drivetrain in place. So I'm not too worried about it right now. In fact, it's holding 360 dead on right now. With the pulley ratio that I'm looking at, which is probably going to be at 2.6 to 1, that will get me 100 RPM. And 100 RPM is fine for what I'm doing. So that's pretty well perfect. How fast will it go? Well, that's 3,000 RPM there, which is the maximum on my override. So let's just stop the spindle. Turns out this is an 8,100 RPM motor. There you go. 8150 RPM right there. That is way too fast for a layer. But that's why we have police to gear it back down again. Incidentally, spindle control is working great there. 8148 to uh, 8152. That particular motor is probably better suited for a mill than it is a lathe, but uh, hey, I'll take it. And not even warm, heat sink's not warm. So running it full speed like that, uh, without any load on it, it's not having any problems at all. So now let's have a quick look at the enclosure I'm building, and that'll be enough for today. So this is the enclosure housing I'm building. This was two large pieces of angle aluminum that I welded down the middle and I put those in air quotes because uh, I may be the world's worst aluminum welder who can actually call himself an aluminum welder in that is actually stuck together when it's done. Uh, I need a whole lot more practice because this was just ugly and if you look carefully you can see there's a bit of inclusions in there and then when I put it in the mill to try and face it off and make it look pretty uh, this part rang because it wasn't supported well enough and it shattered like hell so it kind of looks like ass. Uh, all this does is it fits over top of the KVIC. This cable gland here is where the AC comes in. ON OFS switch to control the uh, thing in itself. This is where the circuit breaker for the AC side is going to go once that comes in. This is an AC LED just to act as a pilot light that will be wired into it. So when you flip the switch on, you know it's on. Because when this thing is on, it's now the motor's under computer control, right? So it can start without warning. So you need to have something on there that lets you know that it's there. And then uh, on the output side, the DC is going to come out the top to go to the motor. All this does is just bolts to the heat sink through some holes that I screwed in the side and some taps in the cut in the heat sink and it just fits on top and makes a nice little case. The whole thing then bolts to the front of the lathe headstock so that it's all self-contained. Plug in the lathe and off you go. Uh, I could theoretically even put in the potentiometer in here and have it for non-computer control but I'm never going to run it not on a computer control so I don't, need, I don't see any need to do that. And that's all there is to it. So this is the business end of the enclosure. This is the four-line aircraft connector that goes out to the computer for the motor speed control portion. This is the waterproof gland where the uh, AC line comes through. There's the ground. You, both the line and the neutral go to this switch, so it switches both. So whenever it, the switch is turned off, there's no power in there. It's not connected to the wall at all. And then from the switch, we go um, the line line goes out to the motor controller and the load line goes to the circuit breaker. This LED is in parallel, so this side of the LED goes to the neutral side right off the switch and this side of the LED goes to this side, the fused side of the circuit breaker. So this way the LED is off if either power has been manually turned off with the switch or if the breaker is popped 
and uh, it's not being powered that way. You got to remember when this thing's all hooked up, the lathe can start under computer control. The O1 OFS switch on this is just an arming switch. It's not an actual make the motor go switch. I wanted to make sure that I had some sort of indication that it was armed so that if uh, the light is on, I know that the lathe can start at any moment without any intervention from me. So let's get this thing together. Now this is interesting. We just had an electroboom moment. Uh, it's plugged in right now and uh, I can turn the switch on and off and you see the green LED comes on and just inside there's a green LED that says the board is powered up so everything seems okay. And I powered it on and I plugged in the motor controller bit, turned it back on again and something went pop and the breaker popped and something spat out. So I'm gonna take it apart and see what it is we just blew up. Well, I am at a total loss. I've just had this thing apart and checked continuity on everything I could think of. Continuity between this and the outside of the, the uh, cable housing, between this and the computer housing this goes to when it's wired up. Uh, anything I could check to see if it was grounded out to something or shorted out to something, everything just worked. And now it's plugged in again and works just fine. A little green light inside is lighting up and I found no evidence on the main board of anything that looked like it let all the blue smoke out. The only thing I can think of is maybe there was a little piece of swarf in there, which is entirely possible because it's right next to the drill press, that just shorted itself out and when it shorted it spat out and now we're okay. All right, well, there's only one way to find out. I gotta go ahead and put a connector to put on the DC out and hook it up to the motor and give it a try. But for the moment, it looks okay. Uh, last step on the housing is to make this bottom piece. I'm just gonna use a piece of angle aluminum into these two bolt holes here. It'll just fit inside, tighten it down, and Bob's your uncle. That is seriously weird. Okay, so here we go. Big moment. We've got it mounted to the lathe. Looks like that electroboom moment was just a piece of uh, metal swarf that fell inside the box when I was playing with it. And it uh, spat itself out when it shorted out and didn't hurt anything. So no harm, no foul. Got away with it. Better to be lucky than good, I guess. This is the line that goes out to the controller. This is AC in. This is DC out, which I've currently got clipped on uh, half-assed on the side of the thing just as a proof of concept. And what we're going to do is we're going to fire this thing up. So we power up the controller, power up the motor driver, power up Mach 4, enable, go to jogging and just bump that z-axis, that worked, and let's go turn this thing on, M3S1000, set the start, And look at that! We have a heartbeat! We're getting there. This is progress. Alright, thanks for watching. Let me grab my beater. Man, quick.